six months as a real estate agent and what have I learned? How many deals have I closed? Am I broke yet? All those questions will be answered today in this video. Surprise, surprise. So in six months, I've done two deals under my name. I've done two deals outside of my name. I have two deals in escrow that should be closing fairly soon. So that should be four. It's actually one deal for my listing and I found a buyer. It's some commercial land in Hesperia, 90,000 at 3% on each side. So I'm gonna make 3%, 2,700. I actually really like that transaction because it pushed me. This commercial land that's landlocked has only been listed for maybe two, three months and i just hammered the same person over and over again showed him the value in buying this land at this price and we made it deal happen so i applaud myself for that because people just post and then leave and then never try to sell it and i think we're in a different market well i know we're in a different market and that just doesn't work that was pretty cool took a lot of work but you know this is this is what you sign up for when you do this that transaction is a little complicated because it has trust and llc's and a whole different llc with the trust and it's all just to protect people because each one of them is an entity and uh, i'm not the best person to talk about this because i still don't know what's going on half the time i'm just kind of just moving and grooving and trying to figure it out myself but i'm very fortunate i have a lot of good clients right now i'm working on my fifth deal as well which when she gets pre-approved we're already going to put in an offer it's already ready we should win this home fairly simple and fairly easy she has good income good work history good credit all of the above it really just comes down to the loan officer on the file and if he does his job i have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I have eleven people shopping at the moment. I still have my four hundred and sixty-eight thousand dollar listing. I lost my other listing with the cool backyard because of personal reasons for my seller. To be fair, I think 2023 is gonna be a very good year for myself if I just continue to keep applying pressure every single day. And I think it's important right now to work harder because agents are like, oh, it's the end of the year, let's just relax and get my taxes together and have a good holiday season. No, go harder when nobody wants to work. And then when people are working, still go harder. Just go hard, just go hard, just work hard. That's why I think a lot of agents fail. I think a lot of agents, loan officers, I think a lot of people in this industry fail because they fucking suck at working. And this is a problem that I'm having with one of the loan officers I used to work with. I have to beg this guy to jump on a phone call and explain to a client about an application. It's like, you want them to put an application in to spend 200, 300, 400, 500 thousand dollars, but you don't wanna give them three, four, five, 10, 15, 20 minutes of your time. How are you gonna build trust by a text message or an email saying, fill out the app and then I talk to you? So there is a little bit of frustration where I'm at right now. And I think it's because I don't wanna grow the way the people are trying to make me grow. And I appreciate my broker so much and what they provided for me. And I'm forever grateful for that. And I would never, you know, do anything wrong by them. But they want me to stay here with this guy. And it's just, it doesn't mix. And if you guys know me, I'm just too honest. And I just say what's on my mind because I don't like to lie. Um, it, I don't feel like it's good for your soul. It's just kind of frustrating because he's dropped the ball not once, not twice, three times, four times. It's a normal pattern. And I refused to let my reputation to my clients be, oh, this guy works with this or this, or he didn't call me or this. And I'm actively engaged. I'm there answering phone calls at night, in the morning, in the afternoon, Texas. I'm there anytime that I need to be there because I actually care. Like I genuinely care. I want to help people build wealth. Like that's what I genuinely care about. I don't care about an investor coming in and buying and flipping and you know, kind of fucking somebody over because it makes a shit turd look pretty. I enjoy helping the person that didn't think they can get in a home, get in a home. I mean, I'm sure there's gonna be a time where I enjoy working with investors and not all investors are bad investors. It's just some of them are shitty, just like real estate agents. Why do you think 90% of real estate agents fail? Because they fucking suck at what they do. They don't make calls, they don't follow up, they don't ever, 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 try they expect business to come to them and that's why i think i've had success in a horrible market six months in people are like wow how and i don't find this impressive from what i'm doing i mean if you look at statistics i'm ahead of the curve right because they say it takes six months to close one deal i've closed four well i'm closing four 
my third and fourth are for sure closing because all parties are all in agreement and it's cash and we're just waiting for an assignment clause and that's a whole different video but i've closed four in six months and i'm about to close five and i have people shopping for a cabin and i have people shopping for multi-families and i have people shopping for single family residencies it's because i do this every single day that's december i manage every day and every month how many people i talk to every single day what am i doing productively to get to where i need to go it's the small things that add up to the big things it's the the calls that I made on my first day of getting licensed that I'm now working with, kid you not, I have someone looking for a multifamily and I have been nurturing this lead since the first month of my license. That's typically what it takes. For me, it's always the same thing. It's basic. I don't like making things more complicated than they should be. I try to be very simple and straight to the point. I wake up, read, meditate, walk, stretch, and then when I go into work, I make phone calls and I follow up with clients. Those are my main two focus. And then my third is make content. You notice how I'm not like fucking reading articles about how the housing market is falling apart or this or that or this or that or anything of that fucking nature. It's because all I care about is gaining clients and taking care of them and educating them and making content to get more clients and take care of them and fulfill their needs and get clients and make content. A lot of people do everything else but prospect. And then they wonder, why don't they have clients? Well, because you're fucking terrified of picking up the phone. My six months have been absolutely fantastic. I think I'm getting better every month. Actually, I know I'm getting better every month. I'm excited to come back and talk in a year and say like, hey, this is where I'm at. A uh, tad bit nervous for 2023 because, you know, everybody's like, oh, doom and gloom. But it's kind of funny because I think when everybody goes doom and gloom, you should be like, yes, opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. If the sheep are thinking, oh, this is gonna be horrible, then this is when you take advantage of this side and you go, no, I'm doubling down, I'm going harder, I'm doing this. Because when times are good, you're gonna be like, man, I did that myself.